Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is what's happening in the mobile space and the internet space in Eastern Africa. Just to give you a perspective of how that market is growing and what is different with what is actually going on here. Um, one of the things that we've seen in um, East Africa, I mean, outside of the, the politics and everything else that is truly African, there's absolutely huge growth happening in, in the mobile space, in the technology space, and what we're finding in Kenya is becoming a bit of a hub to test out various uh, elements. And you've had previous speakers talk about M-Pesa, Ushahidi, and some of the new developments coming out there. What we're then beginning to see is sort of a marriage between some of these new ideas and then a, an entrepreneur and a developer community coming out of that. So. Um, just to put it in perspective, so in East Africa, we talk about a population of about 120 million. Um, Kenya alone um, has about 40 million people. Subscribers, uh, mobile subscribers are 22 million. Um, what is interesting, out of those 22 million, 14 million of them use mobile money every day. So we already have a, uh, an area where 60% of the mobile uh, population is already using uh, their phones to transfer money every day. Within the Safaricom network where M-Pesa is, it's 81%. So 81% of all the mobile users are actually transferring money every day. Um, the other thing that, that's also been achieved is that the, the mobile coverage has now reached 85% of the population. And this includes data services as well. So what we're then beginning to see is a lot of people then getting a high uptake with regard to getting onto the internet, albeit it's on the mobile phone and not on a PC. But at the end of the day, we're still getting the growth that, that we need. And then um, they did a survey the other day and they found that 80% of the businesses in Kenya are actually using mobile services every day. And this is something even before services have been put out there, this is now just the citizens themselves in terms of what it is that they're doing in terms of using their, their mobility. Uh, I'm not an economist, but I thought I'd throw some numbers up at you. Um, that's the first one top left uh, just gives you an indication of the phenomenal growth that's happening in subscribers, right? And so, I mean, this is year-on-year -year growth that is, that, that is pretty phenomenal. The next thing is what's happening with regard to the, to the revenues. Now, these revenues are purely on the telcos right now. We haven't yet seen the third parties begin to then take advantage of these particular revenues. But what is interesting is look at the bottom left. That is what's happening in the price per megabit of data. I mean, it's actually collapsed. We used to pay $6,000 for a megabit of data. These days, you can get it for less than 600, and they're saying that by the end of this year, it will be 150. So it's a phenomenal collapse. Um, same thing is also happening in voice and SMS. I uh, was just having a conversation with uh, uh, some friends earlier, and the price of a voice call in Kenya is three shillings, which uh, that is like 0.3 rand. I hear that is quite amazing compared to uh, South Africa. The price of an SMS is one shilling, which is 0.1 rand, right? So there's been a huge collapse in the prices. Whether the telcos are going to be sustainable at those, at those prices is something else. But for us as entrepreneurs, we're seeing it as wide open space. So now we can get a lot of the population to now start using uh, uh, this, this particular technologies, right? And then because of that collapse in price, there's been a huge growth uh, in, in bandwidth utilization, right? Um, you've seen a lot of these graphs before. So that's the M-Pesa curve, right? So that's how M-Pesa is growing uh, in, in the Kenyan market. And it doesn't look like it's about to slow down, right? I mean, it's literally a hockey stick curve uh, that, is, that is happening there. Um, another uh, survey that was done, um, this group went around Kenya and asked, um, how do you perceive the mobile phone? 60% um, of people in Kenya perceive the mobile phone to be a business tool. 35% strongly believe that it's the key mobile tool. So 90%, 95% of the market already sees the mobile phone as a business tool, right? Um, and then if you take into consideration that there are now 20, uh, about 23,000 outlets where you can actually go and trade money um, from your mobile phone to real cash and vice versa within the country, now 23,000 outlets compared to about 900 uh, bank, uh, bank branches. So that gives you an indication of what's going on. Um, so, and then we've reached now 13 million uh, mobile users. So I'm just setting the context to, to just explain to you then what is going on. So now we are seeing a huge um, increase in the ways that people are actually now beginning to use the technology. And then now what is happening, we have a lot of entrepreneurs who are now saying, wait a minute, 
if the price of the internet is this, and if the price of the SMS has collapsed, and if 85% um, of the population has got access to uh, a mobile phone, and 60% of them already know how to use that mobile phone to transfer money, wait a minute, what's the opportunity? And that's, begin that's what we're beginning to see happening this year. And what we're calling is closing the loop. So offering a service, offering a product, and at the end of it, being able to close that loop and getting paid for that particular service. Right? And this is it's now happening quite a bit. And then how do you replicate that and how do you scale it? Um, there's something that we've been calling in, in Nairobi, um, we're calling it the, the internet boom on speed. So if you look at what happened in the internet boom in the, in the US, so around 1995, there was a lot of websites that started coming up, but they were very informational-based websites. Um, around um, 2000, uh, then the Amazon started coming up, where now you were turning information and turning it into a service, providing a product, getting paid for that product, delivering that particular product. Around 2004, 2005, you then began to see now the, the big boys, the ERPs getting involved in, the, in, in using the internet as a business tool. We have seen all of that happen in East Africa in less than three years, right? I mean, all of a sudden, from using the mobile phone to get a simple SMS, to using it as a business tool to ask for a service, receive that service, pay for that service, get a receipt for that service. And all of that is now happening qu uh, quite a bit there. Yeah, obviously, with, uh, not, not as simply as that, but I mean, to a large extent, a lot of businesses are now being created around that. So we are seeing a, a convergence between applications, uh, connectivity platforms, which is the mobile networks, and then payments, right? And what we're now beginning to see is a lot of real mobile commerce uh, beginning to happen. Um, and it may not happen the exact same way that it happens in the Western world. It possibly won't even happen the same way that it's happening in South Africa. It's going to happen in its own unique, disruptive way as, as we do in East Africa. But at the end of the day, the transactions are actually happening. And we've seen that happening in the consumer space, in the retail space, uh, and in, in the ent enterprise space. Um, so just to give you an example of the ecosystem. So uh, when we first started looking at what is our software development community in, in Nairobi, uh, in Kenya, um, a couple of years ago, we thought maybe we had about four or 500 software developers. Um, in April this year, we've, uh, we reached a community of 3,000 developers. And what has been happening, there have been these different hubs that are being created. So we have a, a, a hub called iHub, and that was created by the Ushahidi team. Um, there's been about four other hubs that have actually op opened. And what they are are open spaces like this, with high-speed internet, um, access to PCs, and allowing developers to just walk in, come up with their idea, create a product, and, and take it to market. Now, so we're beginning to see those particular hubs beginning to happen. We're also beginning to see people making businesses by creating the idea, finding a software developer to then put the idea together, right? So there is now the creation of, of, of ideas happening. Then what we're beginning to then see is the aggregation of those particular ideas in terms of now creating products, creating services, and then using the various tools in terms of how do you, how do you take that to market. Now, uh, one of the things that we've had to um, do in, uh, in, in Eastern Africa is, Bearing in mind that maybe more than 60% of the uh, mobile phones are low-end phones. And so a lot of the applications that we've had to create um, have had to use technologies like USSD. Uh, now, USSD is very popular in, um, uh, in East Africa. USSD is how you're able to uh, use your prepaid um, model to uh, request for more airtime, uh, download for more airtime, and pay for that particular airtime. So because 95% of the market uses prepaid airtime, 95% of the market knows how to use USSD te technology. And then, of course, we've got the web applications and the SMS applications and the WAP applications and what have you. So what we're finding is that developing the same application on many different platforms so that you can address the many different markets. The major wave that is then changing is obviously the Android wave. And what that has done is we now have Android phones in the market for about $90 US. And that is now creating a completely new different wave. Now, if, if you can be able to create your applications to run on web and to run on WAP and running on an $80 uh, Android phone and then integrate that into a mobile payment platform, not only can the developer make money from that, but you can now run an entire service against it, right? And that's what we are seeing as the mobile commerce revolution. So we are having um, developers creating on the different platforms 
creating a service of some sorts, provisioning it, billing it um, either through uh, M-Pesa or one of the other three mobile payment uh, um, uh, gateways. Um, I'll give you an example. In, in Kenya, we have got 45 or, or so banks. Out of those 45 banks, about 20 of them already have mobile banking applications with APIs that you can then get into. So you can actually, uh, like there's a very good application from a bank called Mkesho that has now opened 7 million bank accounts. And what you're able to do is that you can create an application and at the end of the application, once the, the service has been provisioned, you can then say, go to my bank uh, Mkesho account, withdraw X, transfer it to Y account, and you get paid for that. So that software developer gets paid, he monetizes, uh, the person providing the service gets paid for that, and the customer who is using a very cheap uh, $80 phone also be able to do a full transaction as though he was using uh, a web service, right? And then based on that, then you get the delivery of the service. Um, well, it, technically what's happening then is, so we have users using all different types of tools. So on the low end, you have got mobile phones, S40, Nokias, um, that are using simple USSD tools. You've got the high-end PDAs and, and what have you. But what we have are now developers who are then developing on different, de different types of applications and then provisioning those part particular applications and then linking them to the various banking payments. Right? So it's a bit of a, a mishmash of, of what the, the internet does, but it's actually working, and people are actually using it. Right? Um, so what we are seeing is a lot of different uh, applications uh, being developed. Uh, we have a lot of health applications, a lot of uh, agriculture ap applications, um, shopping applications, entertainment uh, uh, applications. Um, the ones uh, in entertainment and shopping vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Western world where those do very well, what we are seeing in our side is it's very much the agriculture ones, the education ones that are beginning to get, actually get some traction. The question is, is that if you as an entrepreneur, if you develop all of the applications in agriculture, how do you monetize that? How do you make money from it? So that is still part of the revolution that is still going on in terms of how to do that. Um, I'll just give you a case in point. Um, we developed an application for the tea sector and tea is uh, the second largest uh, industry in, in Kenya. And what we did is that we linked uh, a mobile technology to a mobile way scale and to a mobile printer and got 300,000 uh, uh, tea farmers that when they're delivering the crop, they put it on this automated way scale. It reads up on, uh, on, on the scale uh, electronically. They get an electronic printout of that particular weight and whatever what has been captured on that mobile device gets sent by the data channel to a server somewhere. What that did was increase the yield per farmer by 13%, right? Uh, and we didn't add more tea into the bag. All it is that we cut out fraud. So basically, it means that the middlemen were making 13% of each and every transaction in tea. Now, you take that and then you expand it across all the various commodities in Kenya and across Africa. And that's how much of a business there is in just cutting down fraud and increasing efficiencies in that type of thing. So there are a lot of different things happening in terms of how people are using mobile applications that may not make sense in a very developed uh, world, but in terms of where we are in Kenya, it's making a hell of a lot of sense. And the farmers are happy, the government is happy, and we as the software developers are happy. Right. One of the things that is also happening is, so we are looking at what is the trends that happen with the, with the internet and where is it that the first mover advantages happened with regard to e-commerce on the internet? Then taking those same concepts and replicating them on a simple Nokia S40 phone, right? So imagine that you're able to, uh, when you're going back to uh, wherever your home is, you're able to go onto your phone, and depending on the type of phone you have, it will ask you, do you want to use a USSD menu, or do you want to use a web menu, or do you want to use a WAP menu, or do you want to do it by SMS? You get onto this particular platform and you pick what it is that you want to do. You get an approval for that uh, particular transaction. Then it will ask you, how do you want to pay? Do you want to pay by M-Pesa or do you want to pay from your current account? You say, from my current account. The money gets moved from your current account and into uh, the, the travel agent's uh, payment and you get a receipt and you take that particular receipt onto uh, as, as you're boarding the plane. So then you do the same thing as you're getting a cab. You do the same thing as you get into your hotel. You do the same thing as you get to order food for where it is particularly you are. So imagine everything that you're able to do with your credit card, but now doing it on a phone. And then we're not saying that you need an expensive high-end phone, 
we will do it using simple uh, USSD technology on a $50 phone, on a, on a $60 phone, right? Now, these are the type of applications that are now beginning, beginning to come to market, okay? Um, we then also have um, a lot of, uh, uh, should I call them social-based apps that are also being, being created. And then people come up with different ways of, of how to monetize. So like the Steamer app on the top right-hand corner is by the um, uh, power company. And basically, you can now pay for, the, uh, for your power from your mobile phone wherever you are. So on your phone, you can, you can say pay bill. You pick the, the Steamer app. And based on that, you put in uh, whatever what the, what the code is, and then it will ask you how do you want to pay. Pay by M-Pesa. You then withdraw money from your mobile phone, transfer it to the power company, and you get a receipt back on your phone, right? And now this is a public utility that's already doing this. Um, Maji app is water in Swahili, and so the water companies are also doing that. Um, disaster management, you all know about what Ushahid is doing, which is on a completely different level. So there's all these different uh, types of things. Uh, there's even a, an app that's been done by the immigration department for checking to see whether your passport, uh, where it is in the processing, because that was uh, the place where there was the most corruption, right? You had to pay to get your passport done and that type of thing. So all of that is now being done. So we also have the government building apps. They're not very fancy and they don't look very good, but they work, right? Um, so it, and, and all of that is then, what is driving these apps is the payment gateways. The fact that M-Pesa is there and Zap is there and the mobile bankings are there, you then have a reason of why build the app, right? Because not only are you provisioning a service, you can actually get paid for that particular service. And this is where we see now the mobile payment uh, revolution going. So the first phase was a lot of mobile cash transfer, which is that, um, the graph that I showed you earlier. We are now expecting to see another graph, but it's not gonna be just from mobile transfer. It's going to be payment for a particular service. And what's gonna drive those services is the apps that create the demand for that particular payment. So we are beginning to see it moving away from person to person to retail to person. And then the next thing we expect to see is retail to retail, right? And that is already beginning to happen. Um, so with regard to uh, the retail apps that we're, we're talking about, you talk about um, ordering a pizza, getting it delivered home. Um, we have a lot of this, um, it, it, uh, what you can do in Nairobi quite easily is that, especially if you, have, um, especially if, uh, you live by yourself, you can get people to come into your uh, house, clean it. Uh, you can get laundry people to come and they'll do your laundry and that type of thing. Now previously you had to leave money on your dresser or whatever. So what happens now is that, they, that you can create their apps where you can say, all right, um, come to my house at this particular time. Once you confirm you've done it, I will m you the money. And you link that particular transaction to whatever what the, the service was being provisioned. Okay. Um, so some of the, the apps that are already in development uh, that, that we know are already happening in Kenya. Um, we're having music apps, tourism apps, uh, restaurant apps, ticketing apps, point of sale apps, and all of these things are happening. Now, they're still at a very raw level, so there are a lot of um, applic applications coming up from these 3,000 developers that I mentioned about. What has not happened is turn them into growing businesses. And I guess that's the next stage in the revolution that we are hoping to see, where now a lot of the entrepreneurs can take these cool stuff that they're doing and turn them into real businesses. And that has not yet happened. Um, what I will show you is how um, Coca-Cola is actually using mobile apps to distribute um, Coke in, in um, urban areas where sometimes it's not very safe, and also on top of that, get paid for that particular um, Coke that you've distributed. And that's happening on the low end side with a simple $40 uh, Nokia phone by the sales guy. The supervisor who supervises that guy is using a, a higher end um, a smartphone. That is then linking to a simple application that is sitting at a distributor premises, and that is then linking into a bottler that is then integrating into SAP and, uh, and uh, various ERPs. But now linking the entire thing, but the core of the product is actually a simple uh, $40 phone. So what happens is that, um, you all know how it happens, so you have the, the manufacturer, then the distributor, uh, the distributor then has salespeople who go to retailers, and then consumers come to, the, um, uh, to where the retailers are. So basically, you, um, use the, what is happening is that the distributors, salespeople, 
are now using simple uh, $40 mobile phones to place orders, um, to do the deliveries, get a receipt for that particular delivery, and after you've done the delivery, you also then collect the cash from the retailer. And the retailer is usually some roadside kiosk or, or, or something like that. That information gets sent via um, the uh, mobile networks to a particular server where that is processed and they do their cash management, stock management, and that type of thing. Now, these are real applications that are actually already happening uh, in, in Nairobi um, and then uh, creating uh, a, b a business around that. So that is a typical example of how we're taking simple apps that are, are then being used in day-to-day -day, uh, transactions. And a lot of this has been facilitated by the fact that we now have uh, 60 to 80 percent of the population that knows how to transfer money using their mobile phones. Um, then part of the things that uh, we're now looking at um, through this uh, iHub and the various platforms we have for the entrepreneurs and creating these um, spaces is how do these entrepreneurs make money? So coming up with different business models. And what has happened is right now we have a lot of the networks and a lot of corporates that are sponsoring uh, two-month type um, training sessions where they take the entrepreneurs through how do you make money, how do you create revenue models and business models out of these applications that you've been doing. So whether it's by transaction fees, advertising has not worked very well yet um, for various reasons which I won't get into. Um, subscriptions, um, it's, it's it's marked uh, well in media, but it has not really worked very well for us on the application side. On-demand is working very well, right? And we're finding that an on-demand service, you can even charge higher for it because it's, it's usually a, a one-time. Um, there are a lot of free apps that are coming where you're hoping to then upsell later. Um, that is still being tested to see how that goes. And then also trial and pay, where a lot of developers are putting apps out there let people use them for two months and then we basically have a time bomb at the end of the two months until you get paid. But a lot of this is still work in progress and it's going on in what we're calling the, the hubs that are happening out there and um, what is happening with, with the entrepreneur community.